So let's talk about cameras inside of ZBrush. ZBrush has two types of perspective cameras as well as an orthographic camera view. And I think it's valuable that you use both of those, the perspective and the orthographic view when you're sculpting. It helps you get a clearer picture of the shapes you're trying to make. If I'm snapped to a side view, for example, I will often press the P hotkey to turn off perspective, and that allows me to more easily make big shape changes from those orthographic views. You'll just want to make sure that your X symmetry is turned on and you're making changes to both sides of the model at the same time. It's also helpful when you are checking your silhouette and silhouette view to have perspective turned off. It just gives you a clearer picture of what your actual side view or top view or any other orthographic will actually be. You turn perspective off using the P hotkey. You'll see that that enables the perspective button here. Now, ZBrush's cameras are accessed under the draw menu. If I open the draw menu and dock it on the side of the screen, you see that we have this button here, and that is the universal perspective camera. That is the newer perspective camera available in ZBrush. If we turn that off, you'll notice there's a slight change to our perspective distortion. The universal perspective camera is the better camera to be using, but if you're perhaps working on an older scene file matching up to photo reference that you lined up in a previous version of ZBrush, you might have occasion to turn this off and then use the older perspective camera here. You can change your angle of view. You can align the uh, line to the object. And that's about the, the, the length and, and width of how much control you have over this camera. It's not the best one to be using, but it is important to understand that it is there. If we turn on the universal perspective camera, now we've got more options here. We can use a horizontal or a vertical sensor, and you'll notice that that does give a slight change to the perspective distortion. Horizontal and vertical sensors are used in different types of, of um, DSLR, DSLR cameras as well as digital mission picture cameras. So if you have spent a lot of time working in photography, you will understand the difference between those. If you're not familiar, Stay with horizontal. Next, we have a selection of focal lengths going up to 85 millimeter, which is going to be uh, verging on telephoto, going all the way down to 18 millimeter, which is wide angle. You see this starts to give us a very extreme perspective distortion. Now, if I want to change my focal shift focal length directly, I can use the slider and you'll see my field of view updates accordingly. So I can go up much higher in the 85 millimeter that's available on the slider on the buttons here. For a 35 millimeter camera, 50 millimeter is the standard lens length that most closely approximates the distortion that is given by the human eye when viewing the world in perspective. But for dramatic purposes, it's very nice to go into a wider angle lens. I find um, a low angle view of a character with a wide angle lens is often very dramatic. I think you'll often find when you're trying to sculpt a likeness, working with a longer focal length lens, but not so long that you've compressed all your perspective distortion, can be really helpful when trying to get a likeness. You may also find when you're matching to photography, if you do have a sense of what perspective or what camera was used, what lens was used, you can match to the perspective distortion by more closely matching the focal length, the lens. You have control over the camera's crop factor and you also have undos now and this is really nice. This is new for this particular camera. So as I'm moving the camera around I can undo the changes that I've made. Now this is really helpful if you happen to have lined your camera up to some photo reference or you've lined your your model up and you want to repeat a stroke. It's nice to be able to undo your camera movements to get back to the exact position where you were. Typically I'll store camera positions by going to the movie timeline and opening up timeline, show, and then if I put two keyframes here, I've stored my camera position. So if I move my camera again and click here, I've stored another keyframe. And now I can move between those camera positions using the arrow keys. Now I find this really handy for storing um, my favorite camera views when I'm working on something, especially if I'm working with photo reference. However, if you have, you know, failed to load or failed to store a keyframe, you can always undo to get back to it. Now there's another button here you'll find out in the interface. This locks your camera. And again, this is very useful when you're working in front of photo reference or if you're trying to do a whole bunch of really broad strokes on your creature or your sculpture. If you lock your camera, 
and then let's say we choose the damn standard brush and then start creating strokes in the model, we don't have to worry about accidentally rotating. If I unlock this camera and then start making these really bold strokes, you'll notice every once in a while I'll catch behind the object and accidentally rotate it. If I lock the camera, there's no chance of that happening. The model stays in position and I can just keep sculpting just like that. Let's undo those strokes to get back to our original surface. Now, in ZBrush, it's possible to store cameras. So these are located at the bottom of this menu. You'll see that we have uh, camera settings here. So if I click Select Camera, I can select the camera from a list, but we don't have any cameras stored yet. So let's store a few cameras. I'm going to go to a front view here. And let's see what our millimeters are. We're at 50 millimeters. So I'm going to store camera. It's going to ask me for a name. So we'll call it front view 50 millimeter. Now let's say I want to zoom in and I want to change to the 18 millimeter. So there's quite a bit of distortion on this. Let's go back down to our camera menu down here and we will go ahead and store camera and we will call this front view 18 millimeter. Now if I click my front camera view you see that we've got front camera 18 millimeter and front camera 50 millimeter. If I select 50 millimeter, it switches to that camera. If I select 18, it switches to that camera. And I can also use these arrow buttons to move between them. If I want to rename this camera, I can click the rename button and that gives me the option to rename the camera. If I want to delete the camera, I can click delete. If I want to delete all my cameras, I turn on the all button and then click delete and all of my cameras will be deleted. So let's store a couple others. Let's go to a side view. So let's go ahead and make our perspective much, much higher. We'll turn this up very, very high so we've collapsed all of our perspective distortion. We have to have the universal camera turned on to store a camera, so we can't turn perspective off entirely. So we will store this camera, and we will call this um, side view flat. Let's go to a top view. Store this camera and call it top view flat. We'll go to the back and we'll store this as back view flat. So now if I click this button again, you see we have a variety of cameras that we've stored and we can just click and select each one of them very easily. Now if we want to save these cameras, we need to save a project file. So we'll get a file, save as, and I'm going to save this here. We'll save it as Hellhound Camera Project. That way those cameras will load in with your model each time you load your project. Now, let's say we wanted to share our cameras between applications. Well, luckily, that's now possible because ZBrush can import and export FBX files. That's F as in Frank, X as in Xylophone, B as in Bob, X as in Xylophone. So it's FBX. The FBX file import export is located under Z plugin. And you find it here. It's FBX export import. The FBX file format was developed by a company called Kedara, and it's now owned by Autodesk. The purpose of it is interoperability between the 3D applications. It allows you to save models, textures, animation, curves, uh, cameras, and then share those between different pieces of software. So having this capability in ZBrush is sort of like having um, GoZ uh, plus 10,000. It allows you to do so much, especially, you know, because you're able to take your cameras out of ZBrush and they are, are very, they are accurate 3D cameras. They are accurate perspective cameras. You can bring them into Maya and you can bring cameras and data from Maya into ZBrush. And that's true for any program that can read an FBX file. So what we will do is we're going to go to our tool slider here. Let's bring this down. 
So we've got our model. I'm going to step our model down to the lowest subdivision level because we're going to export an FBX with everything in it. If we go to our menus down here where we've got displacement map, you see that I have a displacement map in the displacement slot. If I go to normal map, I don't have a normal map, but I believe if we go to texture map, we have a texture map here. So these maps can be exported with our geometry. Now, if you watch the video in this series on GoZ, you and our map extraction, where we do use GoZ for one demonstration, you'll know that if we have these maps in these slots and then we run the ZBrush GoZ plugin here, it will automatically open up Maya or 3D Studio Max, whatever your 3D program of choice happens to be, if it's supported by GoZ. Uh, it will then open up the program, export the geometry, link up the maps, and set up the shaders. So it's similar, but FBX allows us to actually do quite a bit more and move back and forth much easier. Uh, but still, that doesn't mean that GoZ is not useful. I think it's still a very useful program, and it works very well in conjunction with the FBX controls. So that said, we have our texture slots turned on. Uh, if we were to you know, want to fill a normal map slot here, we could um, generate a normal map. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll just leave these settings as they are and click Create Normal Map, just so we have textures in all the slots, because we do have an option in the FBX exporter to bake our textures into the file. So it should be very quick to generate. And there we go. Now, if we go to the Z plugin, FBX Export Import Manager, we've got our options here. I can export selected, visible, or all. And I'm going to leave it to all so I get the teeth and the tongue. Um, the tongue, I believe, is still polypane, so we won't have a texture on that to export. So if we go to Texture Map, here you see we don't have a texture. So I can go to Create, and let's open up UV Map and just make sure that we actually have UVs on here. And we do. That still retains the the UVs from the original sphere. So I'll go to 4K and I'll go to Texture Map, Create, New from Polypaint. And let's go ahead and we'll leave this. Oops, we actually generated that at too low of a subdivision level. We'll turn it up to its higher subdivision level. And then we will create New from Polypaint. There we go. And now I'll turn down my resolution because the resolution the model is set at when we export the FBX file is the resolution that will be contained in that file. So we just want to be aware of how much we're exporting in terms of polygon counts. So we're going to send it to all. So it will export the teeth, the tongue, and the body. Now, we can set this to various file formats. If you're using Maya, the best thing to do is match this to your version of Maya. I will be using Maya 2018, so I will use FBX 2018. But if you click on this, you can go through all the different standards that are available. And I believe this goes up to 2019 right now. We have to scroll back through 2019. 2018. There we go. Now we can write out binary or ASCII. The FBX file format supports both. There's really no reason not to use binary, so we'll leave it at that. We can export 3D layers as blend shapes, but we're not going to do that for this because we don't have any of those. We don't want to export our meshes as try, so we'll leave that turned off. And we're going to leave the coordinate system as Maya Y up. That's the Y axis up. Now, I will turn on embed maps and smooth normals. So the metal exports with smooth normals and the maps are embedded uh, into the file. Now, of course, this will only work if you're using the binary format, not the ASCII. Here we can set the texture um, uh, file format. I choose TIFF. So we'll go here. We'll keep clicking this through until we get to TIFF. 16-bit TIFF, TIFF is fine. Now I want to open up the options. So under options, I want to make sure that I have export cameras turned on. Now, if you're only interested in transferring cameras, and there's many many op times when that is what you're interested in doing, just moving a camera uh, between one application and ZBrush, you might choose to only export cameras and only import cameras. You might also decide to save your favorite cameras like this. You might save them out as an FBX file, and then you can bring them back into another, another project. We have the option to export smoothing levels, polygroups as materials, and polygroups as subdivisions, as selection sets. So 
These are all potential options. We're not going to turn them on, but I wanted you to know that they were here. Everything under here is for import. We can import cameras. My last time I was using this, I was only importing cameras, so only is turned on. And um, since we're not importing right now, we don't need to worry about these particular settings. So let's go ahead and export. I click the export button, and then that will bring up our file here. Let's create a new folder, and we'll call it FBX underscore export. And we're just going to save this as hellhound dot FBX and click save. And ZBrush will go through all the maps. It will export the geometry, and it will export the cameras as an FBX file. And there you go. It ran rather quickly. So now let's switch over to Maya, and let's import that FBX file and see what we get. Now here in Maya, I will go to File, Import, Option Box, set our file type to FBX, and then we will click Import. And then that will bring up our Import box. Let's drag that over to the screen here. Now I will go ahead and open up the Hellhound FBX that we exported and click Import. And it's going to take a little bit of time to read through and import everything. And there we go. So let's go ahead now zero in and if we go to panels perspective here you can see that we've got all of those cameras there's front view 50 millimeter front view 18 millimeter there is the side view flat and the back view flat so let's go back to our perspective front view 18 millimeter now if I select the mesh and go into our attribute editor, you'll see that it's actually brought in the maps as well. If we go to the material, and it's defaulting to Fong, so let's change this to a blend shader. And I will go to shading and turn on hardware texturing, and we should be able to actually see our textures here. Now, it's going to, have to make the specular color of black. Let's turn the specular color up so we can actually get some specular reactivity on here. And let's go to the color map. And we've got it set to sRGB, and let's go to color balance, and our default color is there, color gain. Let's bring this down so it's not quite so overblown. And we will go back to our bump mapping, and there's our normal map. It read our normal map in, and I'm going to change our color space to raw. And there you go. We should actually see our our mapping now, our normal mapping on the object. So it's brought in the maps and it's brought in the cameras. So it's a very, very portable file format. It'll bring in everything that we saved out of ZBrush and including the normal mapping and including the displacement map. It, um, if we have a displacement map in the displacement channel in ZBrush, it will copy that over as well. So it's not quite as sort of turnkey as Gozi, but it, it is a powerful tool. And I think the way that I most often use it is for cameras. So for example, if I were to, let's get rid of these cameras here. We'll get rid of front camera, all these extra cameras that we created. We're just going to go ahead and get rid of these. We'll select them and delete them. And let's do a create cameras camera and let's go to panels we'll look through selected and we'll just zoom out with this camera and let's pick a really conspicuous view here we're just going to look at the character from from way underneath and let's change our let's change our, our um, focal length let's set this to put it back down to 13 millimeters so we're super wide angle looking at the underside and then what I will do is I'll go to file export all or alternately you could select everything and then go to file export selected and option box and we're going to select fbx so fbx export and we want to edit our preset and we just want to make sure that we are exporting the cameras <clears throat> so cameras are checked let's go up to our export plugin information we are fbx version 2018 Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of that, and let's click Export All. Make sure that everything is looking good here. Preserve references doesn't really matter for us, and click Export All. And that's going to bring up the same file window. Let's go ahead and drag that over. 
And I will save this out as Maya FBX export. And just to keep things organized, I think I will create a new folder and put it inside there. So we'll call this Maya export. Double click that, and then we will export our FBX file to there. So it's exporting all to that folder. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import that camera back into ZBrush by using the FBX import option, but making sure it's only importing a camera. So here we are back in ZBrush. Under FBX export import, make sure under our import options, import cameras is turned on. And I'm going to turn on only because I don't want to double up my geometry and my textures. I want it to read that FBX file and only bring in the camera. So I'll click import and that'll bring up the folder. We'll go to FBX, um, doo -doo -doo. FBX export. We'll go to Maya export. And here we've got the Maya FBX export.fbx and click open. And it will read the file and we should get a pop-up here telling us that it is successfully imported once it's completed. Let ZBrush do its thinking and it's parsing the file. Always be sure that your file format here does match the actual FBX file format you're dealing with. There's obviously you've already seen a whole bunch of different FBX formats. And if those don't match up, it could introduce a whole bunch of issues for you. And there we go. File imported, one camera. Remember we deleted everything but that one camera? And there it is. There is that under character view set to, I think it was 13 millimeter. If we go to draw, we can see, yep, 13 millimeter. Very, very, very wide angle. And there is that camera. Now I can lock that camera if I want to, and then I can always keep it to that position, or I can unlock it and continue moving on around it. If we go back to the draw menu, tear this off, click here, you see we've got all those other cameras that we saved before with the addition of camera one, which is just the default name out of Maya, and there is that one. So this is really handy for moving models and cameras and textures between 3D applications. And it's a really exciting addition to ZBrush. It was a couple versions ago that this was introduced, but it does make life much, much easier. I found that it's very, very helpful in production that you can take a camera, um, which typically when you get scan data, uh, there's cameras associated with it. So you can always line up your cameras with scan data using an FBX export. You can line up cameras with um, shot sculpt or corrective blend shapes. There's a lot of different uses for this that are specific to sort of pipeline and visual effects work. And with just a little bit of familiarity with the tools, you'll be able to find plenty of ways that you can integrate it into your own workflow. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at Maya's cameras and the FBX import export options as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.